Um, welcome. My name is Doug Mikhail Mallory. I'm the finance director at uh, Burberry in Japan. I've been there for about two years. And uh, when Brendan asked me to give this talk to future leaders, I thought, well, you know, what can I talk about that you know people would find useful or could take away? So and I understand that all different industries, all different companies are represented here. So I tried to think of something that would be common, common theme or something that you would find in your career. And that's definitely um, when the top management comes from Asia or, uh, you know, US or the headquarters. They're coming to Japan. And then maybe in your current role or maybe in your next role, um, you know, your local country head will come to you and say, hey, hey can you help? I know the, the head is coming to Japan. Can you help me put together a business update presentation to, uh, you know, that we're going to give for the visiting VIP? So, you know, this is obviously a big, big event, a big uh, chance, both for yourself and for hopefully your boss. So I put some notes together just in my experience in uh, different companies. Um, every company has a different style. They have a different way they like to do things. So I didn't get into the details of, you know, formats or, you know, what you talk about. Because, you know, every company is different, every industry is different. But I try to put in just some things to think about when you have the task of putting together this presentation. So maybe it won't be yourself, maybe part of the team is putting it together. Um, but I put this together so you could take it home with you and look at, look at it at your leisure. So I didn't have any slides, as you can see. So um, just three, three points I want you to take away. But first, you know, anytime you give a presentation, whether it's for business or for something else, you know, what I always do is think about, you know, your shoes. Think of put yourself in the audience perspective. You know, what do they want to know? I mean, they're coming all the way to Japan, so there must be a reason that they're here. Sometimes it's a very, um, you know, fixed reason that, that, you know, it's a very specific reason that they're coming, they're going to meet with a certain customer, you know, but sometimes in the middle they'll just try to squeeze in a business update because they, they want to know what's going on. But um, the business update, it's not about what's on the slides. It's not about it's not about the numbers, it's not about the results that, you know, maybe you many of you in finance, but it's not about the financial numbers you put together, because they already see that. They see that every day in all the reports and all the um, all this stuff that you're doing every day. So you don't want to have a presentation full of just numbers and and uh, stuff that they already have access to. So what they want, why they're coming all the way here, you know, is they're coming to see um, you know you. So it's the message, you know, they, they, um, they say that, you know, 95% of communication is nonverbal. So they're coming to see the room, to see not just the presentation, but how it's being presented. What's the morale? What's the body language of the people who are speaking or the people who are just listening? You know, I put some things here. Is the strategy, can, you know, maybe there's a new strategy in Japan. So is it working? Is it not working? So they see the reports. They see the quali quantitative data. But they want to know, like, does the team believe in the strategy? And then talent evaluation. So this is always it's you know unwritten part of it. But the big thing when they come, they only have a limited time that they spend with you know the local team, the Japan team. So every second of that time they spend basically evaluating: is this a person the right person in the job? Do the other people, if it's a senior person, do the other people you know respect or you know does this person have the respect of the team? You know, do we have the right people in place? So that's a very important part of it is the talent evaluation that any senior leader will do when they come. And then you know, I talked about the body language and just the confidence of the speaker. You know. And it's not about, you know, being fluent in English or whatever language, you know, that the, the, your home country, the home company is. But how confident can the speaker make their points known? Can they you know, can they effectively communicate? So the first thing you want to know is, you know, so so and so is coming to Japan. So why are they coming? What do they want to know? What's the most important thing? But in a presentation, you know, maybe you've squeezed. They managed to squeeze in twenty or thirty minutes somewhere. You know, you have, you know, maybe all the headquarters office staff is in, together in the room and, and they're going to give a presentation. But they're not going to remember, you know, every detail that was on that was on the page. So. They're just going to remember, you know, kind of the mood of the room or what was the key kind of, you know, one or two kind of takeaways from the presentation. 
So if you're put, putting together this presentation, you have to make sure that you are the one who dictates you know, what that takeaway is going to be. That's why um, I, throughout this material, I talk about story, I talk about flow. Because each presentation, there's only really one or two points that you can make. You know, and I put some sample ones here, and then you can, um, you can modify this for, for your own company. But you know, just an example is, you know, our results, our results are accelerating driven by new product X. You know, that hopefully it's a good story. Maybe the story is not so good. You know, so actually the situation is challenging because of why and, and, and so and so. But you know, we're expecting some upside from this, or you know, but that, it's just one sentence. You know, if, if somebody, if you have to go meet the person at the airport and say, well, how are things in Japan? You know, you should have you know that kind of one one sentence. Well, things are things are great because you know this new product is doing great. Or well, you know, things are tough because of the competitor, but you know we've got this and this going on or something, you know, but just one message, that's really all that that person is going to take away. And then all the nonverbal things that I was talking about, so so that's why the message should be consistent, but um, so yeah, try to cre create a sense of momentum or hope, you know, hopefully you have good news to share, but you know, the, the top, toughest time in a company is when things are not so good, right, so the person may be coming because things are not so good, so you, that person will come and see, you know, Again, the morale, or you know, are there are there people who have the kind of uh, you know initiative, or you know, or leadership that maybe that will help turn the situation around. So, um, so I, I put thirty minutes max. I mean, um, I'm going to try to keep my talk to the maximum of that of that amount of time because, you know, that's just any person that's about the maximum they can hold their attention, especially if they're jet lag and they're they're flying all the way to Japan from. So another part of the world. So so keep it brief, and you know just one clear message. Then after you have made the slides, um, you know together with the team or you know whoever is putting it together, you know revisit the order and the message. You know so sometimes the message isn't clear from the beginning when you put it together and you say, okay, well actually the, the message the takeaway I want to take from this is, um, you know, the story of the the new program that we're doing. So, so then take out every slide that has nothing to do with the program or that might digress the situation, right? So you want to just focus everything so that it builds up into that one takeaway that you want them to take, you know, that they want to get the, the message they take home. So then the last part is, um, and this is kind of the meat of, it's just kind of a sample presentation, but, you know, you convey the message by telling the story. So this is the story that, uh, that you, uh, your leadership, have, have decided. Um, I didn't put any details about actual slides because every companies, some companies have templates the way that you should do a presentation in our company, or some people have personal preferences. So my personal um, one book that was very useful for me, I, I just put this here to share with you. Uh, it's called The Visual Display of Quantitative Information. It's it's a book from the 70s. It's by this person called Edward R. Tuft, um, but it shows kind of all these kind of uh, ways to show information and data in a clear manner. So uh, I'm afraid it's only available in English. I checked uh, Amazon Japan, but it's only English is available. But if you have an opportunity, and uh, a lot of like, like when you when Microsoft PowerPoint first came out, it was like horrible, right? Everyone used those kind of the templates that were included and they're really messy, but slowly in each version, they've kind of improved it and cleaned it up. And a lot of it is, uh, linked to the, the thinking or the, the teaching of this person, Edward Tuff. So if you're ever, if in your job and if you're in finance, you know, you're always going to be putting pages and, and, and graphs and things together, just take it a look and it gives you a lot of advice on how to clean things up. So uh, here's a just very a sample like seven page agenda. So first one, I would always set the mood. So, uh, you know, different companies do it different ways, but maybe you know, if it's a, a story of success, you know, so in my industry, maybe we have a new store that we're really proud of. I might just start with just a picture of that new store or maybe just one phrase on a page or, um, you know, I'm not a big fan of lots of video and animations, but if you have like a nice video that will kind of set the tone, then I would put it in the beginning here to set the tone and, you know, it gets the, the interest in. And then the next page, again, this is optional, but Basically, you're the expert on Japan, right? The the boss, the, the 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 CEO. I mean, that person reads the Wall Street Journal and Financial Times, so they they're keeping track of 
the news coming out of Japan, but what they want to know is how does that affect your business? So how does that link to your business? So I mean, I'm in retail, so uh, for example, you know, the sales tax increase. Yeah, you can read the newspaper that the sales tax is going to go up, but how is it going to impact your business? What do we think is going to happen? Same thing, you know, with FX rate, Nikkei. So these kind of macro stuff, it's in the newspaper every day, right? So anybody can read that. Anybody knows, oh, the, you know, the yen is, is its lowest rate in, you know, in eight years. But then so what? So you have to link it to your own business, right? Whatever industry you're in. And, you know, that's, that's what they want to know from the Japan team. They, they know that the Nikkei is up, but, you know, they want to know how it impacts your business. And then what I put in page three is, you know, so sometimes the macro is, is very macro where there's, there's not really a lot going on, so that's why I put it as option. But what they want to know is what's going on on the ground, right? Your competitors, your key competitors, what are they doing? What's the trends in your market? So this is where, you know, I, I put macro environment as the second one to try to start from like a big picture and then try to zoom in on your individual industry. And they always want to know what's, what's up with the competitors and the, you know, the, the situation for your specific market. And again, the, what they want to know is the qualitative information. You know, what do you think about it? And then, um, you know, then, then you start to get into the meat, which is, you know, actually the actions or what, what you want to update them on, the successes and the challenges. So this is the real kind of the business update part of it. And then I don't have many details here because it's going to be different depending on your company. And then, then I put the financials. So, so some companies, you know, like my... One of my previous companies, GE, they always tend to put the financials first, but I think it flows better after you say what's happening or what's going to happen, and then you show the financials and show the link, you know, and this is where, um, you know, and then some, some companies just be, okay, CFO, just can you put the financial page together and, and we'll put it in, we'll slap it in there, but, you know, it makes it much more powerful, and it seems that you're working as an effective Japan team if it flows like this, like so. The actions, you know, and the comments on the financial page or the, the trends or whatever on the financials, you know, tie into what's gone before. I have it here. So financials should add to the story, right? It shouldn't just be, okay, you're telling the story and then boom, oh, here's the sales. You know, you have to. It has to add to the story. And then uh, next steps. So going forward. Um, you know, short term, long term, it, it really depends on, on the, the content of, your, of the presentation. And, but then I always try to wrap it up with, again, either another image or the conclusion that, you know, just kind of takes it away. So that's, you know, a very simple, kind of very generic business update, but, you know, it's just an idea that, that maybe you can use uh, for your next time you have a visitor coming to Japan. And then Q&A, you know, some people... Some people just, they like to interrupt and, they, you know, they just start asking questions, you know, before you're even talking. So, you know, I'm not going to say that if, you're, if the CEO interrupts you, you're going to say, you know, no, we'll, wait, we'll get to that, but it's up to you. But, you know, I would try to maintain control of the agenda. But, you know, sometimes that, that what they're asking will be addressed in a later part of the, of the presentation or the, the, the story. So you can say, you know, we have, we'll talk about that on page five or, or something like that. Um, so feel free. I, I think it's always good to not be afraid to take the initiative. Right? If it shows it shows confidence. It shows that the Japan team's in control. You know, it's like okay, we know what's going on, and, and, and that's a great question, and we'll we'll get to you. Uh, we'll talk about it later, or you know, sometimes, or it can, might just be a, a totally new discussion. But you know, I think I think it's best to show that you know the Japan team that you have this clear message that you're all on the same page for. Uh, you know, the situation, whether it's good or bad, um, you know, and then I think that would create, if, and if you're all working on it together, you know, it shows this feeling of kind of unity, and, and if I was the, the boss coming in to see the Japan team, I'd feel, you know, a lot more secure to, you know, have the right people in charge. So that's kind of, uh, that's my generic advice, I know it's very, every company's different, but, um, you know, I thought I would share uh, kind of how I approach it when, when the VIPs come into town. Okay, so I'm happy to answer questions or, or, or any other uh, thing you want to ask me about. Thank you. I guess a, a question we talked about uh, sort of getting into the meat of the presentation. Um, I know obviously you can't get too many specifics because like you said, everywhere is different. 
what's your general take on sort of how many details should go in the slide versus how many details should be presented orally? Because uh, in my experience, I've had everything from exactly what the speaker is saying is written out word for word on the slide, and you take the printout and you can go home, or it's just a graph with labels, and then all the content comes from the speaker. Okay, so where do you fall? Again, it's personal preference. I hate it when the speaker just says what is on the slide because you know I'm a pretty fast reader, and most of the you know people who are coming, the type of people who are coming to Japan, they're they're probably pretty smart, probably pretty fast readers. So so my advice would be not not to read what's on the slide. Um, but again, if it's just graphs, you you have to tell them kind of what they're looking at. You know, so I. Um, yeah, I, so I didn't bring any examples here, but I'll, you know, I think you can, sh and then this book here will actually tell you ways that you can put a lot of information on a graph and still keep it clean. And then what I would just put on the comments would be, how does, the, I mean, so why is the graph in the presentation in this place? What is it showing, you know? So, and one I did a few months ago was, it was the macro slide, right? And I just showed the only message so this, the message of this presentation was, you know, momentum's picking up. So in the luxury, some of you guys are in the luxury industry, you know, things are picking up after, uh, after the, the earthquake and stuff. So the macro slide was just, it showed the, the exchange rate, it showed the Nikkei, you know, and I just took it down off of Yahoo Finance, and it was like the graph was like this, you know, and it had some, like, kind of bullet points about that, that the Bank of Japan had said and things like that. And I wondered how much kind of macro stuff to put in, but I wanted to show that first, you know, total Japan, the kind of momentum is shifting, and then we start to get more specific into what the department sort of doing, what the competitors are doing, anything. but, you know, so it, it was just a graph, so you don't show up these are the graph, you can't show you things are going up, you know, so maybe, uh, you know, it, it really depends, it might be the results of a certain product, or, you know, but make sure the graph, you can see, you know, like, like the, the exchanger graph I was talking about, Maybe you don't know it's exchange rate, but you know the graph. It's either clear it's something is moving up, and then you read the bullets or you hear the explanation. Okay, this is the yen dollar rate or something. Um, so that kind of went rambling on, but you know, there's different things you can do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, often in finance, I think we get some pretty detailed questions on you know, the aspects of the financial side, what's happening with the and what's happening with this aspect of the gross profit and um, yeah it depends on the management style but you can get stuck into the, the detail and then um, I think you can sometimes lose credibility if you can't answer something it's very difficult to answer very quickly. Uh, how do you handle those, those difficult questions and try to keep management on topic? It's a very good question. And it's kind of, <laughs> it's trial and error, right? Because people are different, companies are different. But, you know, like, um, and I'm not going to say, if you have the financial page and the PPV is, you know, big red number and it's a material, you know, I'm not going to say just, you know, <laughs> reads over it, you know. But, so, you know, it, again, every situation is going to be materiality and, 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 and sorts of things. So, but some people, you know, are just, they like to get into the details just because they like to get into the details. And then I would try to, um, um, and you have to kind of know the style of the, the audience, but those kind of details that have potential to kind of detract from your message, like you said, you know, you can use the appendix or you know, use the details. So it's hard to say if that if that price, purchase price variance example is, is material, then, you know, maybe it's part of your story because... Um, Again, I don't know, maybe it's coming from FX, maybe it's coming from something that's happening in the supply chain that's a big part of your story that they should know about, you know? But if it's kind of, but if it's not part of the story, then, you know, you just have to be careful about how you bring it up, you know? But you just be aware that this is a potential <laughs> you know, sidetrack, so I would have the, you know, and I would never, I would never say you hide something, but you would, you would say, you would have the plan of how you can get track, get on track, or and you know the type of person it is. It's a person. If it's a big number, you know, and the Japan team doesn't mention it at all, then the Japan team's going to lose some credibility. At the same time, if it's not really the main thing, or it's not the main story, you know, 
then the Japan team should be aware that this isn't the biggest thing. So it's <laughs> it's hard to talk in generalities, but that's what I would do in the situation. Yeah, let me ask a question apart from presentation. Sure. So I'm, I'm mainly working with marketing team of the shoot car company. So, so I just, uh, do you have any ideas for what do you think are important apart from traditional finance role, such as uh, budget and actual comparison or project evaluation? Apart from that, what do you think is important things to support or uh, contribute to the growth of marketing sales of marketing team. So so how finance can best support marketing or yeah. vice versa? Uh, I think yeah. in, in addition to the traditional finance. Um, so what's the what's the ideal relationship between finance and marketing? Is that kind of your question? Or? Uh, yeah, I want to know idea apart from the traditional Okay. So actually I started my career in marketing. I spent my first five years were in marketing and I didn't like it because I was doing all my work, I was busting my ass over here doing marketing. But I could never draw the link to what I was doing was helping the financials here. You know, and I think, um, from my experience, I think, you know, and in some marketing people, and again, it's very different, you know, some marketing is very data, and very um, metrics driven, uh, and some is not, but, and in some marketing is more directly, like, it's more incentive, so there is maybe more direct link between what you do in marketing and the actual sales results, but, you know, I, I think finance, and again, it depends on your company, but in my industry, marketing is a big part of our investment. So you know, as, a, as a finance director, I have to know what they're spending the money on and hopefully what the return is. So I think it's important just to talk to the marketing people. Um, if you don't talk to them proactively, I think they're kind of scared of finance. And I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm stereotyping, but I think you, know, you don't want to have to talk to the marketing people when there's a problem or you're saying, well, what is this thing? Or, you know, so you know, build the bridge before you need it would be my advice, um, you know, and we try to understand what they do, what are their challenges, you know, because otherwise it is just, if the only time they're talking to finance is, you know, I need more budget or, you know, like, like, you know, this this cost is like this and, you know, you know, build your bridges before you need it, that's my advice. Yeah. So, uh, let's say uh, you talk about the how you present to the headquarters what about uh, if you have to present as a uh, head to the one team, you know, the uh, head of marketing or you know, head of uh, sales or head of uh, supply chain, the uh, I think the interest of stakeholders can be a uh, more body. Then how you present uh, financial? Uh, so how you present? Financials to to the, the team, the Japan team. Yeah. Um, you mean like the management team, or like like a kind of like a all employee meeting kind of thing? Um, maybe uh, I want to ask for management team, some head office meetings. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think um, I think the most important thing is that you know finance is part of the team, so they should. You should have that relationship that you know that you know we're all on the same team. Um, some companies, you know, you know. In my, I think the goal of the, the my philosophy on finance is, is is protect the company and grow the business. So protect the company. You know, you want to keep the company out of the newspaper for all the you know, for bad reasons. You know, and and com- the controllership aspects of it. You know making sure things are happening according to the rules. So that's one key part of, of finance. But then the other, at least as important, is to be a partner in growing the business. So they have to feel, you know, that you're on the same side. Um, and then I think 
if you're part of that team, like I was talking about in the story, you know, if the whole management team is together, they agree on the story, they know what is what needs to be done or, or what the plan is, then finance has a strong role to play because you can show what the impacts are going to be or it's like, hey, we're going to do this, but actually when I look at the numbers, the impact is only going to be this, so we have to do more, or, you know. Um, I think it's the job of finance to make things easy to understand for um, for the rest of the team, you know. So maybe purchase price variance is like has a huge impact on your P and L, but nobody else knows what it is, you know. So uh, you know stuff like that. You, know, you have to. It's, it, you can do a lot. It's educating. It's just educating them what they need to know is is a, is a huge way to, to build trust. Um, you know, when I first joined my company, uh, you know, the finance made everyone's budget, but they never had actually a meeting with the budget owner to say, this is your budget. So obviously they're going to be like, well, who made this crazy ass budget? You know, <laughs> they have no ownership. You know, so stuff like that. It's like, hey, just start. You know, hey, we're on the same team. You know, you want to have a great marketing campaign. You know, I want you to succeed and do this, but, you know, we're a company. We have to make money. Oh, we did it this way in China, it worked great. What is that? It's not in France, it's not working in Japan, and so on. And sometimes everything is x right You have to handle diplomacy, try to convey a message. What would be advice when facing having such a situation? Um. They're not going to see the light in one visit. So I could say, I would say be consistent. And, you know, you only have like one message per visit that you can give. So you can just keep hammering the same point or, or you know, I would, um, you know, don't, you know, Japan's got to push back. And if Japan is really different in this market or in this way of doing things and, and that never happens right but if japan is is different you have to you, know, you have to tell the truth you know but you can't don't feel that you're going to move this whole like this whole like ocean liner of preconception that you're not going to just turn it you know overnight but you just got to keep your little tugboat you just got to keep you know hammering the same message and eventually they'll see that the results or the things that you know the 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 quantitative stuff in the, what the business is doing is it if it's consistent with what you're telling them, then if they are logical thinkers, they'll start to come around. I guess that's that's all I could say. You know, it's the end is personalities and, and a lot of stuff that you, know, you can't control. But I would say you know, don't hide the issue. Be consistent, and then you can't. You know, it's a very um, I think the challenge is being honest without making it sound like an excuse. You know, so be, be aware of you know what you're makes. If it sounds like an excuse, you should try to kind of change the way you're saying it. You know, it could it could be the same, you know, objective situation, but you know, depending on how the message is given, it can come out like an excuse, like you know, but Japan's different, and you know, they they don't like to hear that. So you have to be very clear that you know, if we do this way, we think it can succeed. But this way is just not, uh, it's not compatible with the reality in the marketplace. So, but if we do it this way, you know, if you have alternatives, they're a lot more, you know, they're a lot more uh, eager to, to hear. So you can just say, oh, but Japan's different. You know, and it never works. Yeah. Uh, do you have any tips? Um about follow up after their Japan visit or tips on the preparation or the 
communication before they come to Japan? What, do, do you mind anything? Do you, um, is there any examples of your own story? Um, again, every situation is different, I think. But um, um, I think it gives the best impression if it looks like the Japan, you know, the top management is kind of working together and there's a consistent message. So maybe it's a kind of presentation where like each department head gives their own little, their own little spiel or, you know, they're different kinds, right? So, I, you know, I think it's very important to prepare, like you don't have that pretty slot, you know, it's, it's not about the slides, but it's about everyone kind of, they had a meeting beforehand and agreed, okay, this is what we want to tell the headquarters. And then if everyone's consistent, then the, the, the you know, VIPs come and they're like, oh, but they're all on the same page, okay, you know. So that's what my advice would be for. And then I guess follow-up is kind of, it depends on the situation, but, you know, sometimes there'll be a lot of homework. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My question is, So uh, my experience is the value of the finance person is inversely proportional to the time they spent in their desk in the finance area. So, you know, I would say go go talk to them, go bug them, you know, say how can I help you? What what don't you understand? You know, what what can I do to help you? And they may not have an answer right away because they don't know what finance people do. But you can understand, if you understand the business model and what are the key drivers and things that, you know, things that they didn't help, you know, think of, then they'll feel a lot, they start to feel the value. So, um, you know, if you're making reports, you know, take the report and, and walk over and say, you know, this is what, you know, this is what I think from this report, you know, what do you think, or is this... How do you, you know, is this report useful for you? Can we, should we do, do it a different way? Um, especially early in your career, I would say, you know, you know, it's not FaceTime with the CFO that's important. It's, you know, getting the, you know, getting the trust or the credibility with the Gamba, with the, with the people, the other departments you're walking, you're working with. And again, it doesn't it doesn't have to be like top people, you know, it's just the people just go under the you know, get out of finance area. That's my advice. There's a slightly cheeky question, Doug. Do you think people in finance need to develop more of a sales personality? <laughs> it depends what you're selling, I think. Um, it's about it's about value in, uh, so it's about perceived value, right? So if you have, if you're a salesperson and your product has an amazing perceived value, you don't have to do a lot of work selling it. So you have to do the same thing with your finance output or your, you know, your contribution to the company, right? So if it's useful information, um, if it's timely, if it's, you know, helping them with important questions, that's a lot, a lot more perceived value than, than reports that nobody reads. So. Um, and it's easy for me to say this, you know. It's 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 a every day, you know. I'm I'm you know wrestling myself. But, you know, how can it be the best? How can finance contribute to the team? But you always want to be you know seen as contributing, you know, to the team. Yeah. So I'm not sure if you can share this in in this setting or not. But um, to achieve this ideal relationship between you know, finance and marketing, how do you organize your finance structure? Do you assign one financial analyst in, to each business unit? Or how, how, how did you structure your, your finance team to you know, the best support your organization? Yeah, I mean, if, if headcount was unlimited, you would have you know, each important operational area would have a finance kind of uh, counterpart, you know. 
smaller companies, you have to kind of, and sometimes it's not even like finance. So some, some, so an example is my, my industry. So retail, retail has a lot of, a lot of KPIs, a lot of data, a lot of, you know, quantitative stuff that, that there's sometimes there's insights from, you know, analyzing the data. So just because of uh, those types of jobs tend to be in finance. So there might be, you know, a, uh, a finance person supporting retail and then okay your job is number one percent I mean you're going to be evaluated on how much you know the retail team values you or how much you can um, contribute to provide insights to the retail operation but that job might be in another company it might be in the sales department you know, it might be like they might call it sales planning or you know something so it doesn't have to be finance so um, but typically, I guess typically the value, and I'm, I'm talking about kind of like the FP&A type side, less, less the protect the company side, but the business partner side, you know, finances value tends to be kind of, you know, providing some kind of analytical insight from the quantitative data. It's not always the case, but. What, what is the important thing uh, to get normally uh, in kind of position uh, producing and do the company from a uh, company farm and uh, now work, uh, working as a media analyst and you, as you mentioned that you were uh, working as a marketing team for a year so uh, there's a lot of uh, background and the, so what is the what I think um, and there's not one thing, but it's the more um, the more senior you are, the more big picture you have to see things. So if you're you know if you're an, a junior analyst, typically your area of responsibility is is fairly defined. So, and then this is your number one responsibility. So, you put you know all of your most of your days spent on your area of responsibility. But the person senior to you has a bigger area of responsibility. So, is seeing, you know, seeing more broadly, and seeing the connections between your area and the other areas, and then. You know, the person in Asia is saying, you know, you know, maybe Japan's 80% of the business, so Japan's really important, and then, um, but, you know, but maybe Korea's not as important, or, you know, maybe it's the other way around, but, you know, this person's looking at all of Asia, you know, and then that person's boss is saying, well, where's Asia in the world, and, you know, it's really, how much is, it's, you know, really China is driving my entire business, so I would say, if you want to be promoted, spend as much time as you can in your your boss or even your boss's boss's perspective, try to and and a lot you can't do it in, until you. There's a lot of you know like like my job you know I, I thought I kind of knew what it takes but you know, a lot of it you can only experience once you're on the job. But you can always try you know reading media or just talking around the water cooler or trying to see what's the big picture you know. So I know what my kind of business segment is doing, but how's Japan overall doing? How's, how important is Japan to the overall company, or, you know, and just focus on those kind of big picture things. And if the, the CEO sends a kind of, you know, message to all employees, and it's kind of, it just seems kind of really generic, but I mean, is there some, what, how can I connect that to what is going on now, you know? So I would say, always trying to have a bigger perspective, and then don't try to be seen as the finance guy. Be seen as, you're a business person, you know. So you're, you're, Contributing to the team from the finance, you know, perspective or finance kirikichi, but you're you're not worried about you're not thinking about to achieve your finance goals, but you're saying how can the business achieve its goals? So I think that's an important thing, um, and and I, I think that comes through when you're talking to the senior people, and you know you have those very short chances to kind of make an impression, you know. So if but 
But if you have that kind of perspective, I think it will come across every visit. Okay, if there's no other questions, we can wrap up there. Um, and if everybody can join me, thank you, Doug, for the uh, presentation. We have the room until 9.30. Um, the food is there. The